Welcome to my seminar on getting started in 2 rail O scale. This is Terry Terrence, but due to medical problems, I'm using text to speech software to narrate this. 2 rail O scale can be considered one of the hidden gems of model railroading. Big enough to see and big enough to work on with tired eyes and unsure hands. If you love scavenger hunts, you'll love finding 2 rail O scale equipment, but seriously, it's not that difficult once you are clued into the process. We'll point you in the right direction and help you find your first two rail O scale equipment. After that, I'm sure that you can handle yourself. Let's get started. Most of us got started in model railroading with train sets. Whether Lionel, Flyer, or Tyco, train sets used to be ubiquitous, especially at Christmas time. Now it's hard to find a good train set even at Christmas. Except for an abortive attempt at marketing them in the 1970s, two rail O scale has never had train sets. And the sets that were marketed back in the day, had too many compromises to make them representative of 2 rail O scale. Your local hobby shop is unlikely to be a source of 2 rail O scale. O scale as a whole, counting the three railers, is something like 8% of the model railroading hobby. If your local hobby shop carries anything like O scale, it's liable to be 3 rail. It may even be that the proprietor has not even heard of or ever seen 2 rail O scale. The train set was like the gateway drug into model railroading. In the train set was everything that you needed to get your feet wet, locomotive, cars, caboose, track and power pack, and usually the set cost was less than you could buy the individual components for. Everything was there for you to unbox it, plug the track together, put the loco and cars on the track, turn the knob on the power pack and you were off. If your local hobby shop does not have 2 rail O scale, and the owner has no knowledge of 2 rail O scale, will equip you to find the items that you need on your own. Just like in the train sets of old, everything will be ready to run, RTR, no assembly or building required. And, unlike the cheap sets that you may find today, we're going to select high quality components that will have longevity in the future. How are we going to pull this off? If you are a newcomer to model railroading, you can follow along step by step. If you are coming to 2 rail O scale from another scale, the sources and how-tos will still be helpful. To keep costs down, and to compensate for no local source of supply, we'll be dealing in the secondary market from a number of sources to obtain 2 rail O scale. How we do that is the heart of this presentation. There is a lot of 2 rail O scale legacy equipment, very often new and unused, still out there. But until you get oriented to the value of various pieces of legacy gear, we'll avoid the older equipment. We'll also avoid kits. While kits are plentiful and inexpensive, who wants to put off gratification while they build a kit? While O-scale brass can sometimes be found at reasonable prices, we'll forego brass for this initial go-around. Similarly, there are O-scale items that command a premium price because of their scarcity, quality or desirability. While at some point in your O-scale journey, you may need some of these collectibles, we'll avoid them for now. DCC and sound-equipped locomotives are rapidly becoming the standard. In the interest of cost containment, and to broaden our selection of equipment, we will not specifically target DCC or sound-equipped locomotives. If you are coming to 2 rail O scale from a different scale, and you know how to lay flex track, by all means buy O scale flex. But if you are a model railroading newbie, we'll suggest sectional track. A good, beefy power pack, as used in other scales, will serve you for O scale as well. Proto 48, that is, fine scale, has its place in the O scale universe. But to keep it simple, we'll stick with standard O. You need not spend a lot of money if you are willing to search out bargains and wait to complete your set. It will not cost you a buck 98 either, but patience and persistence will pay dividends. You have the option to buy used equipment on the secondary market. But if you search diligently and hold out, you can find new, old stock, trains to buy. Maybe more than the other scales, O scale folks tend to vacillate between railroads and eras. Because of this, they buy more equipment, for many different styles and time periods, than other modelers. Most of this stuff never makes it out of the box, even after years. This is our target. Again, patience will pay dividends. O scale locomotives are available in all of the common materials. Brass tends to be expensive, and some older units can be of dubious quality. Diecast was commonly used, especially in O scale's golden era. And while a well assembled locomotive in die cast can be a bargain nowadays, you run the risk of getting a poor runner. 
That leaves current production, in plastic, specifically a plastic diesel. While a diesel may not be from the era that you'd like to model, most modern diesel models are good runners and, by and large, they are inexpensive. Steam locomotives tend to be finicky runners and, because the majority are brass, they tend to be pricey. So what should you look for? The Atlas Trainman series is Atlas No Frills line, but still solid. The price that you should pay for these is $100 to $150. Some owners hold out for more because Atlas would do unusual locomotives as part of the Trainman line. They are not particularly plentiful on the secondary market, which also keeps prices up. Weaver made models of a large number of first and second generation diesels. Weaver locomotives are solid, if plain models. Weaver also used a number of drive systems in their diesel production over the years. Weaver did not equip their locomotives with either DCC or sound at the factory. Although Weaver is out of business, their products are still readily available on the secondary market. You may not find every model in every road name for sale at any given time, but someone is always selling a Weaver loco. MTH, although known as a three-rail, Lionel-compatible, manufacturer, they made a number of two-rail models and a somewhat larger number of convertible models in their 3-2 series. The MTH Protosound 3, MTH's proprietary control system, is fully DCC compatible. Their diesels have compromises typical of three-rail locomotives, like swinging pilots and wide coupling. But they are solid performers. MTHs command a premium in the marketplace. But, if you wait long enough, you may find a single-unit diesel for about $150. MTH announced the closing of their business in 2021, but other manufacturers will undoubtedly pick up parts of their lines. Atlas Master Series diesels are the top of the food chain, comparable to the best of what the other scales have to offer. Most models come as two-rail or three-rail versions, a fact of life in O scale. They are offered from the factory in DC, DCC and with a Lionel-compatible control system, with sound in all but the DC versions. Atlas has made a bewildering array of models and is releasing new paint schemes, prototypically correct, all of the time. If you are not picky about your prototype, and you can wait for a bargain, you may be able to snag an Atlas Master single-unit diesel for about $150. You are most likely to buy a second-hand locomotive, especially if you want a specific prototype or want the best price. This is especially true for the Atlas or MTH offerings. O-scale locomotives are durable and probably have not run all that many scale miles. Do not be tempted by the 1970s Atlas or AHM diesels. Their prices may be attractive but they cannot compare with more modern production. Filling out the rest of your train will not be as difficult as finding the motive power. Two-rail O-scale marketplaces can be awash with rolling stock, much of it new. What should you look for? Again, we start out with the Atlas Trainman series. This series comprises only a few car types. But they come with metal wheels and KT compatible couplers. Not exactly plentiful on the secondary market, more likely to be found at two rail shows. Red Caboose also made few car types, but they are very nice models. Available as both kits and factory built, as a newbie, only consider the latter. Red Caboose is out of the O-scale market, but their product is still available as Red Caboose cars on most O-scale buy-sell forums. The Red Caboose cars are now produced by Atlas. We've remade so many car types, it's difficult to catalog them all. If you want a partial listing see my YouTube video, YO Scale, at about the 14 to 15 minute mark. Although Weaver has been out of business for some time, O Scale marketplaces always have Weaver cars for sale, Weaver produced these in quantity. Both plastic and metal wheels were used, and Weaver had their own KD compatible knuckle coupler. Most Weaver rolling stock does not measure up to the Red Caboose, Intermountain, or Atlas Master cars, but they pass the three-foot test. Some of the later Weaver cars produced overseas are exquisite. Weaver car kits are of the shake-the-box variety and would be a good introduction to O-scale kits, but not for the newbie's first outing. Intermountain ushered in the modern era of O-scale plastic cars with their exquisite 1937 AR boxcar. USRA Twin Hoppers, an 8,000-gallon tank car and steel reefer are also in their former line. All of these were available kit or built up. We'll only consider the latter. Although the kits are a step up from the Weaver kits as the modeler matures. Like Red Caboose, Intermountain is out of the O-scale business. But you can still easily find their product, often new in the box. And also like Red Caboose, Intermountain's cars are still produced by Atlas. Again, Atlas Master Series cars are the best of breed. Master Series rolling stock compares favorably to anything offered in the smaller scales. 
Like Weaver, Atlas has produced very many car types, including absorbing the Intermountain, Red Caboose and the foreign-produced Weaver products. Atlas Master Rolling Stock usually does not come cheaply, but, if you haunt the train shows, you can get closeouts at half price sometimes. What to avoid? The Atlas and AHM 1970s plastic cars, although bargains, have deep flange plastic wheels and oddball incompatible couplers. As you gain experience they make good kit bashing fodder, but avoid them for now. Of course, avoid kits and kit-built cars until you have more experience. RTR only. Similarly, avoid legacy cars until you know their value. Avoid brass cars because of their cost. Avoid three rail conversions until you know how to evaluate them. Two rail O scale passenger cars tend to be expensive, kit built and or legacy. There's a reason that you don't see passenger cars in most train sets. Tight curves. But if you just can't live without passenger cars, Atlas makes some shorties as part of their trainman line. These won't look as bad on tight curves. You are unlikely to find these in secondary markets. You may have to pay retail. Two rail O scale does not have a lot of RTR cabooses. This may be an instance of catch as catch can. Including paying retail. In the future, when you are accustomed to the market, you'll have a lot more choice. Just not under our current ground rules of, take it out of the box and put it on the rails. If you are new to model railroading, we'd recommend sectional track. If you are an old hand, go ahead and use flex track. For sectional track, the only two rail option, as of this writing, is Atlas. We'd recommend 45 inch radius for reasons that will become obvious as we go along. For flex track, there's Atlas and micro engineering. Micro engineering can be difficult to bend until you get used to it, while Atlas has a non standard rail cross section. Things to avoid You may come across Atlas or AHM track, sectional or flex, from the 70s, the sectional track has very tight curves. And, while Legacy Atlas Flex is usable and durable, it has a very tall cross section. Both of these legacy track systems are easily spotted, they have black plastic ties. Current production sports brown plastic ties. Since we're using DC, Vice DCC, any large DC pack used by the other scales will do. Since our starter layout will be level in the train short, a couple of amps will be enough. Now that you know what to buy, where do you find it? In my opinion, the best place are two rail train shows and swap meets. You're likely to get the best prices, as people sell surplus equipment. However you may not find exactly what you're looking for. But if you persist in your search, you'll likely be successful. Two rail shows also give you the chance to pick up skills and tips as well as socialize. If you're too far from your nearest show, the next best alternative are dedicated two rail forums. Of course, the buyer pays for shipping. If there is a local hobby shop near you that specializes in two rail O scale, consider yourself lucky, they're few and far between. Sometimes two rail shows are held in the same city as such shops and you can get a twofer. Failing all of the above, try the classifieds in dedicated two rail publications. Some of these are e-zines and, therefore, free. In my humble opinion, if you have no other choice, then use an online auction service like eBay but prices can be out of line and descriptions inaccurate. Sometimes it's out of ignorance, but sometimes it can be malicious. Now we'll build your first layout. We're not going to lay the track on the floor. Carpet fibers will quickly clog the gears, as well as prevent good electrical contact. An investment in a couple of sheets of plywood will not be wasted, it can be reused to build a permanent layout. By the way, buy 3 quarters inch plywood if you can but do not go below half inch. Two sheets placed long edge to long edge, should give you a 96 inch square. Now you see why the choice of 45 inch radius sectional track. Don't use wire too small for your connections. Bell wire is typically 22 gauge, too small to carry a couple of amps. The same goes for run of the mill speaker wire. Bell wire is also solid, a no no for hookups. Good wire will pay enormous dividends. Now that you've gotten your feet wet, a whole new scale is available to you. Many of the skills that you will need are exactly the same as for other scales. Good model railroading books and publications will help you in your model railroading journey.
Thank you for viewing this clinic to the end. A resource section follows, which will be presented without commentary.